In this example, we are going to use a regression to find elasticities. So what we do have is a data file, an Excel file, with some cat food prices. And let's see if we can get you this. Yeah, we have some uh, sales volume and we have the average price per uh, cat food box, you might say. Okay, so we are going to perform some analysis with these two variables and we are going to do this in Stata. So first of all, we open Stata and as you saw, I have stored these two um, files here in this lecture five uh, folder and the cat food folder. So what we do first is that we change our work working directory and it's here under Stata and cat food where I have my two files. So one file is an Excel file where I have stored my data. And the other one is the do file. And the do file is just a text file, which contains the code for our tiny analysis. So we are going to uh, uh, go through each line here and explain what this line does. Okay, so this first line is the hashtag delimit semicolon, which means that we have a delimiter, which is a semicolon. So everything before each semicolon is um, uh, considered by Stata as one chunk of code. And because you have this delimiter, you can spread your code over several lines and this would be no problem. This chunk of code would be considered as one. If, however, uh, you did not have this delimit and then you would not have these semicolons, and every single chunk of code would then have to be on each separate line. So you could not spread this code over several lines because uh, Stata would consider this as a chunk of code, uh, yielding a, an error term or error uh, message because this is an incomplete um, chunk of code. So we just put this semicolon delimiter back. Okay, so what we want to do first is to import our data. I just um, lazily copy and paste. Um, copy and paste is not considered uh, uh, good programming, but um, I'm lazy. So uh, here we have this function import and we tell Stata that it should look for an Excel file and the name of the file should be catfood.xlsx. And after this, we say that, well, if you have something like this already stored here in the variables pane, then you should clear the data and replace it with whatever is in catfood.xlsx. And the first row means that we have uh, variable names in the first row in our Excel sheet. So we just run this and we see that we have week number, we have sales volume, and we have average price. And if we go here to the data editor browse, we can just get a feel of 
how our or what our data looks like. So the week, <coughs> sorry, is just a, a counter and sales volume and price is here. Our question is, what is the relationship between average price and the sales volume? So if we change price, how would we expect sales volume to change? Okay, so in our do file, we want to regress sales volume on average price. So we do that and we see here that if um, we look at the coefficients, then the coefficient on the average price is negative, which means that if uh, the price of uh, a box of cat food goes up by one dollar or one unit, then the uh, uh, sales would probably, on average, go down by 27,826. Uh, and if we just um, plot this, we can make a scatter plot um, with a fitted line. So to make the uh, plot, we select the two-way um, function. And here we have one plot, which is a scatter plot, which gives us the data point of sales volume on the y-axis and average price on the x-axis. In addition, we would like to have the line uh, from this regression uh, and we get the, the same line as the regression line if we use the LFIT um, uh, function. So we have a linear fit of sales volume on average price. And after the comma, we can just uh, put the, uh, the definitions of the titles on the y-axis and the x-axis. So if we run this, then we see that we have sales volume on the y-axis and we have the average price on the x-axis and we have the different scatter points here from the scatter plot and we have the L fit or the linear fit of sales volume on average price. And right from the get go here, we can see that for low prices and high prices, this estimated line is undershooting our data. Whereas for medium prices, uh, our line or our estimate uh, is overshooting the true values here or the observed values here. So because we have this, um, this uh, convex but decreasing a relationship between average price and sales volume, Tukey's uh, bulging rule tells us that we can um, we can um, uh, uh, how do you say it? We can transform these two variables by taking the logarithm. But before we do that, we want to plot the residuals from this linear regression. So we just use the predict function and we call the new variable e, e for errors, and we want this um, uh, e variable or the error variable to contain the residuals from this regression. So we just run this um, uh, code snippet 
and we see here that we have a new variable. And if we go up here to the to the data editor browse, we can just get a sense of what this um, this um, error term looks like. So, and we would like to plot this error term. And we just write two way to get a two dimensional um, figure. And we want the scatter uh, plot to contain the errors on the y axis and the average price on the x axis. In addition, we would like a, a linear fit of the errors on the average price. So if we run this, we see the, uh, the residuals, which is the, uh, the uh, sales volume. If we subtract the linear fit that we calculated in the uh, regression. So here we can more clearly see the convex a relationship be between average price and the um, sales sales volume. And we're undershooting uh, the sales for low prices and high prices and overshooting the um, the sales volume for medium prices. So if we go back to our code, we would like to generate some new variables. We want to transform the sales volume to a logarithmic scale. That's why we, we uh, use the generate function and we want to call the new variable ln sales volume and the value in this new variable should be set equal to the logarithm of the sales volume uh, variable. So now we have a variable called sales volume. And we do the same for the average price. So we just write generate ln average price, which is the name of the new variable. And we set this variable equal to the logarithm of the already um, uh, or the uh, average price um, um, variable. So we just run this code and we can look at the data editor browse to check whether or not these look logical. So the sales, the logarithm of sales volume is just the logarithm of this variable. So the logarithm of 61,780 equals 11.031 and so on. And we did the same for uh, the average price here and took the logarithm of it. So what if we just make a scatter plot? Well, first we want we would like to make the regression. So we can just do this. And we make the regression of Ln sales volume on the y axis, this is the um, dependent variable, and the Ln average price is the predictor. And here we get a coefficient of negative 2.44, and this is the elasticity of sales volume on average price. This means that 
on average, if average price goes up by 1%, then the sales volume moves in 2.44% in the opposite direction. So a 1% price hike would imply a 2.44 uh, decrease in sales volume. If we just make the scatter plot, we use the two way function. And here we say, well, we want to make a scatter plot of the logarithm of sales volume versus the logarithm of average price. And we want the linear fit. And we can see here that if we have transformed the two variables, the relationship is now quite linear. So by visual inspection of this plot, we can say that a linear function suits this process uh, very well. And if we would like to store the residuals from this function, we could do that by using the predict uh, function. Now we want this to be the logarithm of the errors or the errors of the log logarithmic um, transformed model. And we would have the residuals from the last regression. So here we have the errors from the uh, logarithmic model. You can also predict the uh, values and get a prediction of each, uh, each uh, point. So here we have put in our new variable ln hat the predicted values from the logarithmic uh, model. And if we just go to the data editor browse, we can see um, the new variables that we have made, the logarithmic sales volume and logarithmic transform of the price. And we have the residuals from the logarithmic model and the predicted values from the logarithmic model.